we're going to look at his poem called Theme for English B. And so let's do it. <clears throat> and I'm going to, this is going to be a, a lesson where you'll, you'll have to uh, participate. Um, because I, I feel like last time I was participating too much. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, so here we go. So where am I? So my name is Emil Nicolescu. This is me as a kid. Um, as a kid in communist Romania, and that's my dad. And that's the park where I used to hang out as a kid. I'm like five years old. And um, those buildings are kind of like the worker. Here we go. <clears throat> Moving on. So I'm going to give a brief background to Langston Hughes. Uh, read the poem, discuss the setting, which is the place and time of the poem, discuss other interesting details, discuss the main points, and then I would like you to write a prose reflection on the concept of identity. The, uh, so background to Langston Hughes, <clears throat> he was an African-American, he loved uh, the African-American race and celebrated its beauty and challenges. He was the the one of the main poets of the famous Harlem Renaissance or the jazz era of the 1920s. Uh, this was a era that it was, it was a, a, a era of, of great uh, cultural recognition uh, for the African Americans. Um, a lot of them moved to the East coast because the industry needed a lot of, a lot of work. I'm a little sick. Um, so, uh, what is the poem? The poem is called Theme for English B. English B can mean, um, at the time, it was, it's basically English, British English. That's what they call British English courses, English B. But you can also read something else into it. And so think about it, what speaker and his audience. And so what is the speaker? The speaker is the person who is speaking in the poem, not necessarily Langston Hughes. And the audience is the person he's speaking to or the people he's speaking to, not just you, the reader. Okay, so here's the poem. <clears throat> Theme for English B, stanza one. The instructor said, go home and write a page tonight and let that page come out of you. Then it will be true. I wonder if that's, if, it's that simple. I am 22 colored, born in Winston-Salem. I went to school there, then Durham, then here to this college on the hill above Harlem. There are a lot of places here. Uh, we're gonna talk about the setting of the poem. And this will be our first discussion. And I want everybody to participate. Um, so let's go for Anybody who can say, so and one, on one left side, I have the names of the places that he mentions. Winston, Salem, Durham, this college, Harlem, steps down the hill to Harlem and the Y. And you guys know what these are. If you know what they are, tell me. What is, what is your association of knowledge of Winston, Winston, Salem? Okay. Winston, Salem, no one? Well, that's where they make cigarettes. <clears throat> and why is that relevant? Why is he mentioning Winston-Salem? Well, a lot of slaves, the, the, white, uh, the whites who owned the tobacco industry, they use a lot of blacks. Okay, it's also in the South. So, so Winston-Salem puts the speaker, the African-American speaker, the student, into a racially polarized place, right? He was born basically saying he was born, you know, where, where races are very much opposite to each other. What about Durham? Has anybody heard of Durham? Any association with Durham? Are you washing dishes? That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, but I also want you to participate. So I want you to have your finger on the button of the computer button. And, and answer the questions, please. 
What about Mark, dark Mark? So let's go back to the poem, the beginning, because there are a lot of places that identify here. So the poem starts with the instructor. The speaker is, is talking about the instructor having given him an assignment, right? Go home and write. says, to this college on the hill above Her Harlem. Does anybody know what college he's talking about? Anyone? Who, who do we have left? We have Andrew and we have Layla. From the hill lead down into Harlem. I'll show you these steps. Uh, so there it is. He's talking about these steps. So this is a park in Harlem, but it's above Harlem and the Columbia University is on top. You, you see the corner of that building? These stairs are like amazing. I've, I've been there, I walked on those steps. And if you go down those steps and you cross this park, you're in Harlem. Okay, so that's significant. Okay, when you think about who he is and how he feels. Okay. So he says, I take this hill down into Harlem through a park. Then I cross St. Nicholas on Street, 8th Avenue, 7th. I come to the Y, the Harlem Branch Y. Does anybody know what he's... Andrew or Layla? Basically, the point here is that he's poor, but he's going to this very prestigious Harvard University, basically. Columbia University is like Harvard still. And, but he goes down the steps down into Harlem. Okay. And so this is the Harlem branch of, of Y. So why, you know, what is... If it says Harlem branch, why is he saying Harlem branch? What did you say, like, just why? What, what do you think he says Harlem branch? Why is he specifying Harlem branch? Okay, so this is Harlem is, is where historically black people have lived in Harlem. Now a lot more, more white people are moving to Harlem because it's cheaper than Manhattan. Manhattan is super expensive, and so... You know, students from Columbia University live in Harlem, white students. Uh, so, but anyway, so he says that he's in Harlem branch because he's black. He's not white. But he's going to a white university, right? So think of the speaker, then begins to think about who he is, okay? So that's the next stanza after he tells us who he is in the space of that particular space of New York. And he's going, it's not easy to know what is true for me. The 22, I feel and see and hear Harlem. I hear you, hear you, hear me, we too. You and me talk on this page. I hear New York too, me who? Well, I like to eat, sleep, drink, and be in love. I like to work, read, learn, and understand life. I like a pipe for Christmas or records, Bessie Bob or Bob. I guess being colored doesn't make me not like the same things other folks like or other races, right? So my next question for you guys is, who is he? Oh, so in terms of physical, mental, race, gender. So who is he as, as a race? What race is the speaker? Andrew? What, what race is the speaker? Andrew's away. Uh, Peyton? Yes. Oh, you can write in there. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, where does he live at, at the time? <clears throat> Layla. Oh, the answer, Andrew. Uh, go ahead and type it in in that box. Yes, he's black. Uh, I don't know. Uh, he's poor. 
because the YMCA is, if you don't have money, a YMCA is a place, a, you know, an expensive place you can, you can go to. <clears throat> so uh, if somebody who can type, can you put in poor in socioeconomic? Um, what are his hobbies or interests? Passion, yes, poetry. What else does he like? Or what, what did I just, I read something, his, uh, yeah, records, right? He likes jazz records. Bessie, I think he refers to Bessie Smith, the first, one of the first jazz, blues jazz recorded people. He's black, he's male. Uh, mentally, is he strong or is he weak? Is he pathetic? Is he brave? Is he... What is he? What, what does that sound like? What does the speaker sound like? Mentally. Is he sharp? Is he intelligent? Is he creative? Strong. Okay. That's right. He's strong. Because here he is. He's in a white university back when white was, you know, the ruling class. Absolutely. And awesome job. Good job. Look, okay, okay, let's talk about the speaker. What about his audience? So who is his audience? Who is he writing to? If you know what educational status, political status, age, anyone? Anyone. Yeah, absolutely anyone. Anyone. Do, do you remember who is he writing to? So the poem is called Theme for English B. And it starts out, he addresses someone. Anyone? Layla? Do you remember how the poem starts? Who is he writing to? Yeah, he's white. And being white is means that he has power. He's a college professor. Yeah, he's he's even a college professor of a super prestigious university. And so, is he a powerful man? You could put that under political status. Or a weak man. If he's a college professor, 1920s, does he have a strong position in comparison to this young black? man who lives in the 1920s. Uh, anyone? Peyton? What do you think? Is the professor, everybody in that college is white. All the teachers are white. And Langston Q is black. And at the time, were blacks like respected or they were oppressed? Maybe, maybe what? What are, you, what are you referring to? Uh, maybe oppressed, uh, for sure oppressed. Because <clears throat> you could never get a job, you could never become a professor at Columbia University as a black person, never. Or maybe there were some exceptions, but I don't think in the 1920s anybody, I would be very surprised if there are any black professors, there are black colleges, but outside of that, I don't think black people could be college professors in a white college, not in the 1920s. So in this kind, um, so now it takes us to the relationship between these two. So let's go back to the poem to refresh your memory. What he says here. So he says, "I'm 22. I'm colored. I see and feel and hear Harlem. I hear you. I hear New York. I like to work. Blah blah." 
being colored doesn't make me not like other races. So will my page be colored that I write? What does he mean by that? Will my page be colored that I write? Nathan, what is he referring to? What could he be referring to? How can the page be colored? Is the color, is it, is the page gonna just like turn rainbow colors because he's gonna start writing some kind of magic, magic cartoon we're reading here? Some kind of scene from a cartoon where you, you know, the speaker takes a pan and is like a rainbow unicorns flying out of its pan? Or what is he talking about? No, no, it's not. Yes. What do you mean by yes? When, when, the, when the speaker of the poem says, will my page be colored that I write? What, what do you think he means by that? in your own words. Just just to like take a take a wild guess. So in poetic language we use language we use uh words a little differently. So we can take chances of language. So what does it mean? Will my page, what, is, what does that phrase mean? Will my page be colored that I write? Okay, that's fair. Peyton? Yeah, the page will not change physically. Right, so it doesn't mean that literally, we're not talking about literal sense, that the page will be somehow become rainbow colored, right? So if it's not, but still, I mean, he, it's, there's a truth here. There's something true about what he's talking about and very important to the poem. So what else could it be? So if the page doesn't turn physically white, uh, colored, I'm sorry, what, 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 what does he mean still? So basically he expects the white, he, uh, the professor asked him to be true to himself. And the speaker is asking himself, is like, well, if I'm a black person, will the blackness come out in my writing? Okay. That's what it means. So it doesn't turn physics is my page for English B, right? So let's skip to the final question for you. Okay, so... The multiple choice question about main ideas in here. So write uh, the letters. All you have to do is write A, B, C, D, or E. Whatever you think this poem is about. So you have these choices. Do you think the poem main idea is about speaker's identity as a New Yorker from poor class? Do you think this poem is about rage against the white professor from New York because he suppresses the poet with his race of power? Do you think the poem is about a complex identity of the speaker and the audience as Americans? Do you think the poem is about a speaker or the poet showing off a black writing style? Or do you think it's about being an American student who's scared of assignments? As you may be scared of, does he sound angry, Andrew? When I read that poem, was was the, the 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 poet sound angry? Yeah, really, no. So I wouldn't say it's like rage, but it definitely there's something about that, right? Because he did drop out of Columbia University. So a, a great answer is also C, because he says like we're both Americans, <clears throat> you know, and I like things like you know a pipe for Christmas, like a smoking pipe. Uh, you know, I like records. You know, white people like records too. You know music um you know he's in new york they're in new york people are you know like white people in new york you know so it's like saying like we're not so different you know but yes i am also black right so that's why there's a complex identity right so i don't know if we have time for this probably not but so last question would be like what lesson or idea do you take from the poem about 
the concept of identity. Take two minutes and write one short paragraph. You have or have not encountered the same issues when asked, be yourself. Did, has anybody asked you to be yourself? And is it a trouble with being yourself? Andrew, is it a problem being yourself? Do you know who you are? Is there never a problem being yourself? Is there, is there sometimes a problem being yourself? Uh, you mean you're in the country of, you're in the country? I'm not sure what that means. Okay, in the, in the state of Alabama. Okay, in the land of Alabama down south. Okay, so why is that a problem? Why is it a problem being yourself? Are you black? Are you another race? Are you... Okay, so you're white, but a lot of folks there are black, right? And so you have problem problem sometimes being yourself. Okay, right. So the accent that you have makes it who you are. And yes, there is a problem, right? But do you sometimes feel that, hey, I'm much more than just my accent? Do you sometimes feel we are a lot more than the surface things like accent, race, our name, you know, my name is Romanian, Emil Nicolescu, and you would assume that I have a huge accent. I mean, like, really thick accent. And I do speak Romanian. It's not like I, you know, I'm a, you know, my parents were Romanian, and I'm not. Uh, so, so identity. Think about identity as you, as you leave this class. Think about how people assume about yourself, who you are, and how that hurts, really, and how that's unfair. Does that make sense, guys?